Welcome to you Council. Today's lecture is about artificial intelligence as of today and the legal world. If you have any interest in artificial intelligence, you may have heard of GPT-3, which was recently launched by Open Source AI. So in today's lecture, we will discuss the interaction with GPT-3 with respect to legal issues. This is the disclaimer that anything that is being presented in this lecture is not human legal advice, literally. GPT-3 stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer. It's a kind of an artificial intelligence. It was created by uh, a company called OpenAI based in San Francisco, and it has been released a few months ago. People who have interest in AI, they understand that this particular release is transformational. It has taken steps in artificial intelligence that were not um, conceived earlier and that were not expected uh, until a few years later. So what can GPT-3 do? GPT-3 has been made available through an interface privately to certain individuals around the world. OpenAI has provided uh, permission to those people and those people have been testing GPT-3 and trying to accomplish certain tasks with uh, GPT-3 and here is what some of the people have done. They have translated natural language into programming codes and it is amazing the kinds of codes that GPT-3 can write. Uh, explain complex ideas into simple language, generate research papers, generate poetry. I've read some of the poetry, it's fantastic. Write music and even generate new religion if you are interested in doing that. This is what the interface looks like. You simply type your input, your question, your discussion here, and, and GPT-3 will respond to it. So one of my friends has received the invitation from OpenAI to interact with GPT-3, and he was kind enough to pose some questions, legal questions, to GPT-3, which I had asked him. So the question I asked him to put to GPT-3 was, can the Canadian course dispense justice by relying on the doctrine of freedom of contract. So this was the input question that was put and I'll show you what was the response by GPT-3. Response is very interesting. The doctrine of freedom of contract was developed in the context of a free market economy where there were no monopolies and where all parties to a contract were equal. It was not developed to deal with a situation where one party had such an overwhelming advantage over the other that the weaker party had no meaningful choice but to sign whatever the stronger party presented. The doctrine does not provide any guidance as to how courts should determine whether or not one party has an overwhelming advantage over another and what weight should be given to this factor in determining whether or not a particular contract is fair. So it goes on and on and provides this philosophical uh, response to my question. But it's interesting, towards the end, the, the response is... Both approaches ignore important principles of legal interpretation set out in our Constitution Act 1867, including Section 7, and it talks about Section 7. When you read the part that is before this red part, it is fascinating. It, it will cover uh, some of the ideas that various scholars and critics of freedom of contract already have. And so this is not, GPT-3 is not um, copying and pasting information from another article on freedom of contract. It is basically using the question and then all of the data that it has used to learn, it has predicted the answer based upon different combinations that it has in store. So this is not sort of a copying and pasting of a scholarly article. So it's fascinating to see the response that GPT-3 has provided on this academic question of freedom of contract and its ability to provide justice to common people. Uh, but the part in red absolutely makes no sense and the reference to uh, Constitution Act is also not correct. So that's something that I wanted to show you how GPT-3 responded. Also, what I want you to understand is that if you type this question again in GPT-3, you will not get the same response. You will get a different response. And we tried it and we got different responses each time we put in the question. Another question that I asked GPT-3 was, have you read the Supreme Court of Canada's decision in Heller versus Uber Technology Inc.? This is an important decision that came out not too long ago. And how would you decide this case? So the question is, GPT-3, have you read it? What do you think? How would you decide the question? And GPT responded as follows. And it talks about Heller versus Uber. The plaintiff was a former driver for the ride-sharing company who sued on several grounds. 
including that he should be considered an employee of Uber. The Supreme Court of Canada ruled in favor of the plaintiff and found that he was indeed an employee of Uber. So it, it, it provides that information, but that information is completely incorrect because the Supreme Court of Canada was not deciding whether the plaintiff was an employee or independent contractor. The Supreme Court of Canada in that case was deciding whether the arbitration clause that was in the contract, whether that was enforceable or not. So over here, the output is completely incorrect. But it is interesting to see how the response is because in the response, GPT-3 rules in favor of the employee and then discusses this control test which is used by courts in deciding whether someone is an employee or an independent contractor. So it is fascinating to see the kind of um, discussion that GPT-3 is engaging in its response which is all sort of relevant, not on the very question that I asked, but this is something that the court will be deciding when the case is actually going to be argued on the merits of this particular issue. But in any event, the response is absolutely incorrect by GPT-3 at this time. We put the same question again, and, and the second output, which was a shorter output, um, it basically said, I've read the court's decision. I would decide this case by applying the test set out in R versus Oaks. And I looked up that decision. That is not an employment law case. That is a case, it's a criminal law case and it's about burden of proof and reverse onus and whatnot. So completely not applicable to Uber versus Heller. So where do we stand with, uh, with artificial intelligence now? Well, the good news is if you're a lawyer, you're still needed. You will still be required to provide advice and to your clients and you will not be replaced by GPT-3 today. Judges are still needed, judges will be deciding cases, but the question that you have to consider is for how long? And people were previously saying that what GPT-3 is able to do today, that was not possible and it would not have been possible for another five years. And here we are in 2020, GPT-3 is already able to do amazing things uh, with, with respect to the kind of responses it can provide. So it will be fascinating to see what GPT-3 four would look like and how this AI will develop in the next few years. Thank you for watching.